next i'd like to invite a, a very dynamic brilliant surgeon uh, both for cataract refractive cornea everything uh, dr rushad shroff and he'll be sharing some challenging situations uh, that he's faced thank you shell for that very kind introduction i'd like to thank abhay sir for having me for this instruction course so yeah i, I think my slides up uh, i'm going to be just discussing about three four scenarios uh, which we do come across uh, and how to plan for them beforehand and certain ways in which we've actually tackled uh, these particular scenarios so the first uh, video i'd like to play is regarding corneal opacities very often the visualization is poor in in these particular cases and we've actually resorted to the chandelier technique to actually help us in these you can see the 23 gauge troca cannula is placed and as you can see as the chandelier comes on the illumination becomes much better generally you switch off the microscope light and you can see the the phaco emulsification being done here the only caveat in this is that the visible the ability of the phaco probe is slightly different so your depth perception is a little different in these cases but you can see it it really improves the visualization and the ease of doing the case and this actually makes doing these kind of surgeries a lot easier it's especially useful useful in cases where you have herpetic scarring where your chance of uh, success with a keratoplasty may not be very good and for visual rehabilitation this would work as a kind of first step uh, before then assessing what kind of vision the patient has and that's pretty much the end of that case so the take home from this is that chandelier illumination provide, uh, provides us improved visualization in dense corneal opacities it can be looked at as a first step in visual rehabilitation in these patients especially in cases where you would avoid a penetrating keratoplasty say a herpetic scarring or where there's a high chance of failure or rejection the second case is that of a post rd surgery with rk marks with silicon oil in the ac so i'll just play this video and the first thing i'd like to draw your attention to here and just pause the video is this is actually silicon oil sitting in the anterior chamber this patient had had a vitrectomy done earlier and this is emulsified silicon oil to complicate matters more in this the patient had about 12 rk cuts as well uh now normally what i would do is make a side port first but because i am worried about visualizing the rk marks especially through that area where the uh where the silicon oil is so my first job in this was actually to wash out uh, the silicon oil in rk patients i generally prefer to make a peritomy and a, a slightly scleral incision and you can see i am making a three plane incision and then going in with the keratome to just open that and the first thing is to wash the silicon oil out as you can see now the other challenge in this if i can just pause here is that when you stain this was a mature cataract with sinicae and uh, a non dilating pupil now when you stain with silicon oil it tends to be a very slippery material so the staining of the anterior lens capsule was not very good uh, following this we proceeded to do a sinicae lysis to just improve the pupillary dilation and because this was a very complicated case i wanted to improve my visualization so i used a malleugen ring to just ensure enough dilatation i am again washing there as you can see i first used the bimanual to wash out the the viscoelastic and try to repeat the the staining to get a better view of the capsule and then helon was instilled uh, because this is an intumescent type of cataract so we want to push the capsule back uh, my technique uh, in intumescent cataracts is i use a, a needle assistitome with a 2cc syringe and as you can see here i go inside and then aspirate a little fluid out to just bring down the intra bag pressure and then we use the 23 gauge micro rexis forcep to to fashion a rexis in in this particular patient uh the problem was again in this area the visualization was not very good so i ended up making a slightly smaller rexis in this particular patient again a very careful hydro dissection and rotation was done and i'm just sculpting to kind of understand the brittleness of this cataract and i'm i'm using very low parameters both for the the fact that there are rk marks and i don't want the, those to open up and for the fact that the capsule is is very small and there's a small flap on the side and i didn't want the phaco probe to actually catch a hold of that so gently i'm bringing out each of the pieces and then i'm i've switched over to a bimanual irrigation aspiration 
Again, being a little careful because the silicon oil was coming from the zonules, I didn't want to put stress. As soon as I managed to get a little view, I went into, uh, uh, as soon as I got rid of the white material, I went into a retroillumination to improve the visualization. And there you can see the final bit of cortex being aspirated. There is a bit of fibrosis on the posterior lens capsule and that dancing bubble you just saw was some silicon oil still coming through the zonules. I prefer to go into the wound uh, rather than do a wound in assisted into the bag and then implant. This is the, the Hoya IOL, no financial disclosure in that. But it gives a more controlled delivery once you're inside the anterior chamber and gently then dial the IOL into place. Now I realized there was this small flap of capsule so I used the retinal scissors to just create a nick there and then with the microrexis forceps I just enlarged the, the capsular opening so that uh, it would not go into phimosis later. And following this, uh, the silicon oil uh, removal was done by our retina colleagues from the back as well after I removed the malugin ring. And of course, because it's an RK patient, we, we sutured uh, the wounds as well. So the take home points is that in RK, limbal or scleral tunnels are better. It's important to lower the parameters to not affect the, the RK cuts. Silicon oil is a challenging thing because it affects the staining of the capsule. So uh, it's important to pay attention to this if you have a mature cataract. For mature cataracts, decompress the intrabag pressure before making the rexis and use a cohesive OVD. It's important to be patient in these cases. The next is a strange case. Uh, I haven't seen this before. I'm, I think only Sir might have encountered this kind of uh, ICL. This is an ICL actually placed in the anterior chamber, and now this patient has developed a cataract. Uh, just to highlight that we do sometimes face these scenarios. Uh, in this, I made a scleral tunnel because this kind of um, ICL is actually made of PMMA, so I couldn't really cut this in the anterior chamber. I would have ended up causing more damage to the endothelium. So I'm creating a scleral tunnel here as we would in an SICS. What I would draw attention to is that the side ports in this, because we have to disenclave those haptics, uh, rather than make them perpendicular to the limbus, these are kind of being made tangential uh, along the limbus in a way so that the instrument to disenclave can then be introduced and that can be done more easily. So I'm making one on the right and one on the left. And then we insert some dispersive OVD like uh, uh, viscoat. And I made a small entry. My initial entry was not to extend the whole tunnel, but just enough for me to get a grip on the, the ICL while I disenclaved the, the haptics, as you can see here. It's being done on one side. And then with the reverse holding forcep, I do the same thing on the other side. Then we rotate this into an anterior-posterior uh, kind of orientation to minimize the, the enlargement of the scleral tunnel, and then it can be pulled out nice and easily. Again, uh, it just makes it a little awkward at times when you have these kind of incisions uh, regarding your phaco tunnel for a temporal phaco I did in this. I, I switched over to temporal. Uh, so you just have to be a little ergonomic with your placement of your incisions. The cataract itself is not very hard. It could be carousel out and, and then completed. So the take home from this is that uh, we, it's important to make scleral tunnel in these cases. Uh, instrumentation is extremely important. Dispersive OVDs to protect the cornea because you have a higher risk of touching the cornea and getting decimates, detachments like, like shells showed. And the incisions should be ergonomically located to make surgery easier. The last case I'm showing is one of a phacodonosis with uh, subluxation. You can see there are about five to six clock hours. Uh, it's difficulty in initiating the rexis kind of points out this abnormality. Again, once the, the entry is finally made, we use the microrexis forcep. It's important to try and make as large a rexis as possible. The good thing in this case was after hydrodissection, the rotation was actually quite easy and that uh, pointed out that we could go ahead. Uh, following this, the phaco emulsification, again, it's important to lower the parameters. I prefer to trench and then to, to chop in these cases and try to be as gentle with the lateral separation as possible. Okay, I think. There seems to be some kind of, uh, anyway, the, the phaco emulsification kind of proceeded normally. At the end of that, uh, we placed a CTR into the, into the bag. 
So the take home points with this are that the <coughs> rexis forceps, the uh, tangential force should be uh, applied. Try to make an adequately large rexis so that you can counteract for phimosis that tends to happen later in these cases. Uh, the CTR should be used as early as needed and as late as possible. Minimize lateral separation and the CTR should be inserted from the site opposite to the zonular dialysis. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, while we're waiting, I would uh, request Dr. Ajay Dudani, uh, he's a prolific retinal surgeon from Mumbai, to have a brief comment on two points. One, uh, you saw chandelier being used. Uh, I'm a bit worried because if you're not following up uh, that entry into the eye with, uh, without anything, and second thing, well, how about this parts plana entry and irrigation in front for a PCR? Yes. Very brief, yeah, please. So I'll, I'll take the second question first. So I think you and I totally agreed in my presentation. I said the uh, pass plana approach is excellent for doing an anterior and a mid vitrectomy. And you can do a very generous, rather than being a very you know stingy vitrectomy, which we do from the anterior approach. So I think this approach, and uh, sir, you were using a 23 gauge trocar cannula system. Now we have a 25 gauge, a blue color from Alcon, which will give us a much much more finer opening in the past when which doesn't require any leak. It won't leak and it won't require any suture. So I think this is definitely a lovely technique which sir is, and we as retinal surgeons always go past planner, you know. So I think uh, you're coming in our territory, it's a good thing. I mean, you know, <laughs> and. Apologies. No, no, sir. <laughs> I think we should do the best for the patient, as you rightly said, you know. So the patient and uh, using a chandelier system is a very good idea. It does give you a back illumination, you know, like a retro illumination, what we said. There was one more technique which I saw in these uh, opaque corneas, which was shown by a Korean surgeon, where he had an illuminated chopper, you know. So I think if you have an illuminated chopper with this, you could have your instrumentation much more better because otherwise it looks like a shadow, you know, your instruments which are working anteriorly. So illuminated chopper was, uh, you know, sort of giving a more diffuse illumination in the anterior chambers. I think it's a good idea, sir. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Yes.